Hi everyone, welcome back to Wild Reads. My name is Dave. Today is a slightly different video. I want to talk to you about a book prize that I've only just discovered. Roll the titles. Hello and welcome back to a slightly different video today. Now, you may know, for those of you that are taking part and for those of you that are not, that it's non-fiction November at the moment and at the moment I am reading a rather good book. Let me tell you about it. I'm not going to tell you all about it because that will be in the wrap-up. But So I'm reading at the moment Richard Morris, Times Anvil, which is a study of England, archaeology and the imagination. And you may notice that on the cover this book has a little sticker here. So this was long-listed for the Samuel Johnson Prize back in 2013. Now looking at the sticker, I thought, what is the Samuel Johnson Prize? So I looked it up, and it's it's like the equivalent of the Man Booker Prize, but for non-fiction. Uh, it's since changed names. It's now known as the Bailey Gifford Prize. And when I went onto the Bailey Gifford website, I found out that they were due to announce, they've already announced their long list, and they've already announced their short list, I could have kicked myself because if I'd have been on the ball with this prize I would have done a long list and a short list video and really got behind this prize because it's a cracking prize £30,000 to the winner as well which is not insubstantial I looked at the prize and they announced the winner last night now I'm recording this on a Friday this is coming to you on a Sunday so they announced the video last night it was broadcast live on Facebook and a cracking book an absolutely cracking book won it Let's have a look at the shortlist for this year's prize. The thing that unites all six books is that they're beautifully written, they're really enjoyable to read, and they tell great stories. One of the criteria that for me personally as a judge mattered most for a book to make the shortlist was that I had to feel enlightened after reading it. I had to feel that it had transformed my understanding of the subject. So all of these books have radically changed the way I looked at what they had to tell me. I think it's true that when you get a great book, you're never quite the same person afterwards as you were before reading it. And I think all of those books can, can justifiably um, lay claim to that. Individually, each book is important, beautifully written, tells us something that we didn't know before in an unexpected way. If you ask me how I feel now about choosing a winner, I'd say slightly desperate because these six books are really strong, the shortlist is really impressive, and picking one, very difficult. And the book that won the Bailey Gifford Prize last night was How to Survive a Plague. This is published by Picador, uh, and this is written by David France. And I'm gonna read you the blurb of this book because it sounds absolutely fantastic, and I've, I've ordered it already from Amazon because I really wanna read this. Um, so, not since the publication of Randy Schiltz and the band played on in 1987, has a book sought to measure the AIDS plague in such a brutally human, intimate and ensuring terms. David France, a chronicler of AIDS from the earliest days, uses his unparalleled access to the community to illuminate the lives of dozens of extraordinary characters, including the closeted Wall Street trader turned activist, the high school dropout who found purpose battling pharmaceutical giants in New York, the South African physician who helped establish the first officially recognised buyers club at the height of the epidemic, and the public relations executive fight, fighting to save his own life for the sake of his young daughter. We, we witness the founding of ACT UP, AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, and TAG, Treatment Action Group, the rise of the underground drug market in opposition to the use of expensive and sometimes toxic early age drug AZT and the suspenseful and often heartbreaking march towards a life-saving medical breakthrough. Expansive yet richly detailed, this is an insider's account of a pivotal moment in 20th century history and one that changed the way that medical science is practiced worldwide. We had six brilliant books on the shortlist and to choose one above the others was always going to be really tough. I would describe it as an incredibly important epic story but also one that details the lives of individuals 
that are utterly compelling and, and moving in many respects. I think it's a big book on a big subject. It teaches you, it moves you, it tells a very, very personal story of people struggling against terrible odds and fighting a huge battle and at the same time it explains to you the progress of a disease, it explains to you how citizen activism works, it, 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 sort, of, it sort of does everything. It's the broader story of the prejudice the gay community suffered during the HIV AIDS crisis. And then on top of that, it's the worldwide scientific story of the search for a palliative, for a treatment for AIDS. It's an extraordinary story. So obviously you gather from that this book is a first-hand account really of, of the AIDS crisis. Now, I was around and I was an early teenager when the AIDS crisis first broke and I remember it being an absolutely terrifying time. Now, I'm not a member of the LGBT or LGBTQ plus community. When the AIDS crisis first broke, certainly in the UK, there was such misinformation spread and no one knew or no one was telling us where this disease had come from, who it affected, did it affect everyone, what we could do about it, if anything. And I just remember it being a terrifying time because I used to watch the news from a very early age. There were two things that happened when I was an early teenager with the news. Every news story either contained the troubles in Northern Ireland and the IRA, or an AIDS story. AIDS was in the news every single day, and it was a terrifying time. Even if you weren't, even if you weren't specifically at risk, we didn't know because the government were giving out misinformation. The media were almost criminal in their misreporting of this terrible disease, and it was just a very, very scary time. We were shown videos in school about the AIDS crisis and half of it, half the information that we were shown was turned out to be wrong. It was just, it was just a very, very scary time. So I'm very interested to read this book. So if you haven't heard of the Bailey Gifford Prize before, um, it's, I think it's open to any nationality so long as the book's published in English. And it, it is the non-fiction equivalent to the booker. So for next year, I'm going to be all over this prize and I'll be on it from the time they they uh, they published the long list through to the short list. It's very exciting to find a new prize. That's all I've got for you today. Whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your books and I'll see you on Wednesday for another BookTube video. Take care. Bye bye.